So let's talk about your book. Sure. Tell us what's about well, in that the reason, show. The reason I wrote the book is really quite simple. It's because the narrative of Hillary Clinton's campaign, that she has been an advocate for women and girls, is just bogus. She is, in fact, an abuser of women and girls. How so? How so? Well, as, uh, as uh, Joanne Vernocci, who is a feminist uh, writer for the Boston Globe, has written, Bill is a sexual predator, very much like Bill Cosby. I tra- tracked 27 William- women that he has either assaulted or raped. I'm and not they, talking about... They've, wow. never, they've raped? never come forward? Well, many of them have. You That's know, a pretty heavy accusation, it, rape. It, it, very he drugged def- them? He drugged them? No, he doesn't drug them, <laughs> uh, He, but he does attack them. He does assault them. And you know some of these names. You know Juanita Broderick. You know Kathy Willey. You know uh, Paula Corbin Jones, who he paid $850,000 in a settlement for. But you don't know Liz Ward Grayson, Eileen Wellstone, Becky Brown... Helen Dowdy, Dorothy Kyle Browning, Christy Zercher. This list goes on and on and Roger, on. Roger, if he ran today, he'd be reelected. Well, that may be, but the election's not tomorrow, Larry. And I, I, and I want to stress, my book's not about consensual sex. In other words, if I wrote a book about his girlfriends, mistresses, one-night stands, it'd be an encyclopedia. You wouldn't be able to carry it. I'm focusing on sexual abuse. And then sadly, in all honesty, Hillary's not just an enabler, but as I... I think, prove in the book. She's the one who hires the heavy-handed private detectives who who wage a veritable terror campaign against these women to silence them. Jack Palladino, Anthony Pelicano, Ivan Duda. Anthony's Duda. been in jail for seven years. Yes, he has, and he's worked for them when he was governor. He worked for them when he was president. So how does it work? She finds out <laughs> something happened, and take us through the process. I, I think that uh, what ha- Let's take Kathy Willey. Kathleen Willey is an active Virginia Democrat. She and her husband are very active in the Clintons' campaigns. She's a volunteer in the Clinton White House working the social office. Her family has financial problems. She makes an appointment to see the president, who she knows very well. And what she gets is groped. She gets assaulted. He tries to kiss her. He tries to put his hands inside her bra. Uh, She flees. uh, And then that's the good news. Shortly thereafter, her, uh, her home is broken into and ransacked. Her windshield is smashed. Her car tires are slashed. Her pet, her pet cat Thunderbolt is strangled and left on the front step, dead. Her children are threatened. She's out jogging. A man jogs up to her all dressed in black. She picks him out of a lineup, Jack Palladino, and he says, How's your cat? Did you, <gasps> you ever replace that cat? How are your kids, Johnny and Sally? You know, we know where they go to school. You're not getting it, are you? Yeah, and... Uh, so Pal- you're saying, Roger, they're criminals. Yes, I am saying that. Palladino makes the mistake of sauntering into an L.A. bar, seeing a beautiful woman at the bar, starts chatting her up. And he, he says, yeah, I saved Hillary's ass. The only thing that I'm upset about is she didn't pay me more and she didn't pay me on time. Unfortunately for him, the woman was a reporter. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think that I can make a very strong case. But it goes beyond that. Hillary talks about uh, pay inequality for women. Really? No place where she's the boss have women ever been paid as much as men. Not the State Department, not the U.S. Senate, not, well, the, not the Clinton Foundation. In, in, in government jobs, she doesn't control the pay scale. Well, uh, she no. certainly controls it at the Clinton Foundation, despite the fact that they, which is really a slush fund for grifters, not really a charity, eight out of ten dollars going to, sub, to uh, subsidize the lifestyle of the Clintons, uh, five-star hotels, Corporate, uh, private jets, cut flowers. A the charity whole thing. can't spend eighty percent on itself. They, they, you're exactly right; they can't, but they are. So why hasn't anybody pulled their IRS well, they're, status? They're audited. Yeah, exactly, and their audits are fraudulent. Uh, there are numerous uh, mistakes in them or non-disclosure. That you're going to read more Roger, about that I want shortly. To ask you, Roger, I know you a long time. Yep. Have you ever investigated a Republican? Oh, absolutely. I have a name book. one. Uh, I have a book coming out in January called Jeb and the Bush Crime Family. <laughs> Prescott Bush. Never, not, nothing stops you. Prescott Bush. Prescott Bush, fun. making his money uh, arming the Nazis, making his money on a steel whip mill uh, that uses slave labor from Auschwitz. George H.W. Bush, trafficking as vice president, overseeing an operation that traffics millions of dollars of cocaine into the United States <laughs> to sell. Roger. Uh, you know, Why do you act like he's uh, crazy? Uh, Roger, <laughs> Roger, I mean, this. All... Ro- Roger Morris wrote this story for the Washington Post. The fact that the that the government was trafficking <laughs> in cocaine to sell to sell to raise money to illegally arm the Iran Contras after the Congress cut off their funding is uh, that's not in dispute. That's a fact. So who do you like, Roger? <laughs> I like Donald Trump. 
<laughs> no, I, I, I really like, I want somebody outside the, the mainstream. I, at this point, I'm not even a Republican anymore. I'm actually a registered uh, libertarian. I, I was raised in the old Republican Party of Barry Goldwater. Small government, out of your bedroom, out of your business, out of your life. Now, sadly, to me, both parties are the same. The Wall Street Party, the, the party of endless war, the party eroding our civil liberties, reading our emails, tracking our phone calls, massive debt, more borrowing, more spending, more debt, piling so on our saying grandchildren. Trump is the only one who can stop that. I, the only one I see out there. I mean, look, I, I find Bernie Sanders refreshing. I think he is, I really believe that he believes what he's oh, saying he in his heart. He's, you know, I don't agree with him on much, but he is an outsider. And I do think he would change things. Unfortunately, an 85% tax rate, particularly for you, Larry, would be very tough. <laughs> yeah, I- I'm not going there. <laughs> Wait a minute. Do you think Roger... I'm leaving. I'm leaving the country. (laughs) You want to investigate her, Roger? The truth about Sean King. (laughs) Maybe it could be my next book. Who knows? (laughs) Doubtful. What is inside of you? You don't... I interviewed Martin Savage, the very wild right-wing guy, Mm -hmm. who thinks that Donald Trump is the only person who could beat Hillary. Yes. And that she would trump any of these other candidates. I agree with that. Easily. She will be the next president, he said, if Donald Trump is not the Republican nominee. Do you agree with that? I do, because uh, all these other guys are in the club. Can you picture Marco Rubio sticking his finger in in her face and saying, Hillary, when the biggest drug dealer in Arkansas got busted and he hired you as his lawyer and then got a pardon from Governor Clinton, do you see anything wrong with that? Did you do anything wrong? Will he say, Hillary, you have waged a war on women? You've abused all these women? What did she call them? Bimbos, sluts, whores, bitches. Her words, not mine. These women unlucky enough to have been sexually assaulted by her husband. you got to take her on. You're going to have to get in her face. I can't see anybody else who's going to be willing to do that. The Donald is fearless. You know that. You think the Donald would do that? If he has to. I mean, he hasn't read my book yet, but I strongly urge that he do. What do you think he's going to think of it? Well, I, I think he's going to be offended like anyone would be offended. I mean, 50% of the women who vote in this next election have no memory of the Clinton White House years. They don't remember him selling pardons to Mark Rich. They don't remember them stealing the china and the furniture when they left. They don't remember the semen-stained dress. They don't remember Whitewater. Whitewater is very easy to sum up. A, a real estate deal in which nobody made money, but the Clintons extracted $850,000 for Bill's closest re-election campaign. So no one remembers these things, and I I think they need to be reminded. Well, so you're taking on the Bushes next. Uh, Because the Bushes and the Clintons are really, they work together. I'll give you a perfect example, Larry. They raise $138 million for a nonprofit that is for Haitian earthquake relief. Yeah, they work together. They spend $10 million in Haiti. There's $128 million missing. They close the, the nonprofit and they answer no questions. They're profiteering. This is perhaps why Barbara Bush says that Bubba is the fifth Bush brother or George W. says that Hillary's like his sister-in-law. Folks, it's the Bush-Clinton crime <laughs> syndicate. <laughs> well, you love Trump. I do. I, I like Trump. I do. I, yeah. I, he's a Trump sweet Trump was man. our he's guest last man. week. He was very good, but... To me, to not be offended at being publicly said, you were fired. I fired Rogers. People have said a lot That's worse. That's loyalty people, to people, core, people have said a lot worse things about me, so I'm not going to worry about it. Look, we had a brief interregnum, which we fell out because I was a major critic of Elliot Spitzer, uh, and I pointed out to the public that he actually cavorted with hookers while wearing black knee socks which is the most offensive thing I find about it. I totally uh, agree. And Donald, <laughs> and because Donald was friends with Elliot's father, we didn't speak for two years. He was furious at me. Um, and then Elliot went on CNN. He criticized Donald, and that fight was over. Yeah. It was like, Roger, where have you been? <laughs> Last week, Larry, Larry asked Donald about, uh, he asked him a question, and I'm just going to quote exactly what you said, Larry, because you, you, you worded it. Perfectly. You said if you were approached by a man who said 20 years ago he had entered the country illegally, the man took a job picking fruit in the fields of California, his children.